Get new video update from us. Thank you. U.S. President Donald Trump is set to deliver his second State of the Union address on Tuesday, where he's expected to reaffirm the U.S. policy of maximum pressure against North Korea. The speech lays out the United States government's priorities for the year. It comes after a tumultuous first year in office for the presidency. We cover immigration, and uh, for many years, for many, many years, they've been talking immigration. They never got anything done. We're going to get something done. We hope. It's got to be bipartisan, because the Republicans really don't have the votes to get it done in any other way. Trump is seeking billions of dollars in funding to build a wall along the border with Mexico while offering a path to citizenship for undocumented immigrants. A standoff between Republicans and Democrats over the two issues led to a partial government shutdown this month. On the economic front, the president says he plans to mention his success with the markets and tax-cutting measures. The White House has invited guests who support the Trump agenda, including relatives of a girl murdered by a gang with alleged links to illegal immigrants. Thousands of miles of border, hundreds of thousands of young undocumented immigrants, and just a handful of days left to solve one of the nation's toughest political debates. For many, many years they've been talking immigration, they never got anything done. We're going to get something done, we hope. The President of the United States. Trump's first official State of the Union address will give him the biggest stage of the year to make his case Members before Congress. Congress. Our framework includes four pillars, border security, including the wall, DACA legalization, ending extended family chain migration, and eliminating the visa lottery, moving us toward a merit-based system of immigration. White House Deputy Spokesperson Raj Shah said Trump will deliver the administration's measures to keep the U.S. safe, including exerting heavy pressure toward North Korea and other threats. He said the president will also speak on the top five issues surrounding America, including immigration and reducing the trade deficit. The address to the 115th U.S. Congress is set to be delivered at 11 a.m. Wednesday, Korea time. That White House proposal would provide a 10- to 12-year path to citizenship for 1.8 million DACA-eligible undocumented immigrants, a move hailed on Sunday by a senator who will play a key role in negotiations. The president's proposal of allowing 1.8 million DREAMers a pathway forward for, with citizenship is a huge step in the right direction. Uh, he deserves to have an escrow account to draw upon to secure the, the wall system, not just a wall. Chain migration and cutting legal immigration in half, those would be very problematic areas. The proposal faces criticism from both sides, with some House Republicans saying they were disappointed in the citizenship pathway that could be seen by the president's base voters as amnesty. It's not clear that it would have the votes even just within the Republican conference in the House to get through the House. And congressional Democrats blasted the White House, calling the plan shameful and not representative of American values. House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi calling the plan a campaign to make America white again. Republican leadership hit back at Pelosi, saying time was too short for partisan games. With our February the 8th deadline fast approaching, it is vital that we continue these serious and constructive talks. The American people elected us to legislate, not to trade insults, to resolve President Obama's unlawfully established DACA program and other important issues in immigration. I'd urge my Democratic colleagues to put serious good faith discussions ahead of cheap partisan point scoring. And with a White House that's provided sometimes uncertain direction on where it wants to go with immigration, the plan might not have the appeal to break through on Capitol Hill. It doesn't really kind of thread a very tricky needle that needs to be threaded in order to get um, some sort of immigration um, deal through. A deal that would have to go through by next Thursday to avoid a second government shutdown. Catherine Gibson, VOA News, Capitol Hill. So there was hope the run-up to North Korea's participation in the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics would be smooth sailing, but another hiccup 
came late Monday night. Out of the blue, the North called off a joint cultural event scheduled to be held at Mount Gumgang to celebrate the first Olympics on Korean soil in 30 years. For more on the North's sudden change of heart, Lee Sung Jae reports. The countries had agreed to hold it at Mount Kumgang in the north before the opening ceremony on February 9th. South Korean officials inspected the site earlier this month. But on Monday, the South's Unification Ministry said it was notified of the abrupt cancellation. A telegram from the north blamed both media coverage of its preparations that it called insulting and questions over its, quote, internal event. That's apparently a reference to reports that Pyongyang is preparing to hold a military parade on the eve of the Olympics. Officials in Seoul say it's regrettable the event will not be held, noting Pyongyang's unilateral decision. They say what has been agreed on must be carried out. When the two countries started discussing joint participation in the Games, it was hoped the cultural events would also help ease tensions. From the joint Korean women's ice hockey team to the agreement to walk together during the opening and closing ceremonies of the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. Everything looked to be in order, with the biggest international winter sporting event just 10 days away. However, in a telegram notification sent to South Korea at just past 10 p.m. on Monday, the North said it had cancelled the planned joint cultural event set to take place at Mount Kumgang on February 4th. According to South Korea's Unification Ministry, the North cited what it claimed to be biased media reports about the upcoming event, adding it had no choice but to cancel because South Korean media continued to insult what North Korea called sincere measures regarding the Winter Olympics. The ministry said the North took issue with the media reports about its internal event, referring to reports about the regime's military parade marking the 70th anniversary of its military on February 8th, the day before the Winter Games kick off. Reports in South Korea have been saying that instead of an earlier projection of 13,000 military personnel and civilians taking place, there will now be around 50,000. The ministry expressed its disappointment, noting that the North's decision may undermine what it had earlier called a hard-earned chance to improve inter-Korean ties. In a statement released shortly after the North's decision, the ministry added that the unilateral decision by North Korea was regrettable and what it had been agreed should be implemented under the spirit of mutual respect and understanding. The event at Mount Kumgang was initially planned to be a part of a series of events ahead of the Olympics, coming after three rounds of talks between the two Koreas. It's uncertain whether this bump in the road will affect other scheduled events between the two Koreas, in particular the scheduled art performance by a North Korean art troupe set to take place in Gangneung and Seoul. And while the two Koreas are increasing cooperation for joint events, U.S. Defense Secretary James Mattis says that the Olympics should not distract from the internationally agreed goal of denuclearizing North Korea. A unified front against North Korea, as the defense chiefs of South Korea and the U.S. met at Pacific Command Headquarters. Our combined military stand shoulder to shoulder, ready to defend against any attack on the ROK or USA. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis, once again, speaking of military options against North Korea. Our re response to this threat remains diplomacy-led, backed up with military options available to ensure that our diplomats are understood to be speaking from a position of strength. The talks come as North and South Korea engage in negotiations about next month's Winter Olympics in South Korea. North Korea has agreed to send a delegation to the Games. Mattis praised the talks, but expressed caution about what they can achieve. The Olympics talks alone do not address overarching problems. South Korea's defense minister stressed his country is ultimately trying to draw out North Korea to a dialogue with the U.S. North Korea in September conducted its sixth and largest nuclear test. Its ballistic missile program is also advancing. South Korea's foreign minister this week said military options are unacceptable and that the situation should be solved by diplomacy. The problem is uh, war by inadvertence or by accident. When you have a highly pressurized situation, um, anything can happen. 
and uh, people will attribute the worst possible motives to the other party behind what's been done. I think there's still room for diplomacy. Mattis was asked during the trip whether he thinks the threat of a U.S. attack will eventually persuade North Korean leader Kim Jong-un to back down. He said he has, quote, modest expectations of his ability to predict Kim's behavior. Bill Gallo, VOA News, Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Friday with a South Korean counterpart, Song Young Moo, at U.S. Pacific Command headquarters in Hawaii. Mattis said he welcomes the talks on Olympics related matters, but the international pressure campaign must continue to pressure North Korea to denuclearize. Mattis also said the Kim Jong un regime is still a threat to the entire world and that Washington's response remains focused on diplomacy backed up by military options. All right.